guys, I just saw a major announcement come out this past week that could be potentially huge for the entire Ethereum ecosystem. This largely flew under the radar, and I don't think that many people realized how big of a deal this could actually be because it could mean a massive influx of activity on Ethereum and potentially, you know, not financial advice, lead to some serious price appreciation of Ether, the asset itself. So I'm going to break down everything you need to know in this video today, why this is such a big deal as a blockchain developer myself who works this technology on a daily basis. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm, subscribe to this channel. And if you want to become a blockchain master, step by step, start to finish, break into the blockchain industry, you know, increase your salary well past 100K, I can show you how to do that over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's jump into this. Let's talk about this recent development that happened last week that largely flew under the radar, but could be a massive deal for the Ethereum ecosystem. So CeeLo blockchain proposes return to Ethereum ecosystem transitioning to a layer two. So basically, CeeLo is a blockchain, a layer one blockchain that's been running independently by itself for the past few years, but they've basically decided they're going to completely pivot their strategy and become an Ethereum layer two ecosystem. And about why it's a big deal in this video and how lots of other blockchains might be doing the same thing. All right, so let me connect the dots for you and let's break down some of the fundamentals so that you understand why this is important. So first of all, what is a layer one blockchain and what is a layer two? Well, most blockchains that you think of are layer one platforms. They're blockchains that run by themselves. They don't need any other blockchains and they have, you know, their own set of miners or validators, or whatever consensus mechanism and also their own gas token that's inextricably linked to pay the fees on that particular network. So examples of things like Bitcoin, it's a layer one blockchain. Ethereum is, uh, you know, like Solana, Avalanche, Binance Smart Chain. These are all examples of layer ones. They run by themselves. But by contrast, a layer two is kind of like a blockchain, but basically it's, it's an environment where you can do transactions that piggybacks off of another blockchain in order to inherit the security and many other things. And so it runs on top of another one, like layer one and then layer two. They're built on top of one another. So why would you even use layer two in the first place? Like, what's it for? Well, layer twos are the primary way that Ethereum plans to scale, okay? Vitalik, you know, the mastermind behind Ethereum and the entire Ethereum community have been behind this idea for many, many, many years as the long-term vision for making Ethereum fast and ready for prime time so that it can process, you know, hundreds of thousands of transactions, maybe even millions of transactions per second over the long term. And right now, you obviously can't do anything close to that on Ethereum by itself, the layer one. And you could do things like try to tweak Ethereum, make it faster. That's what many other alternative layer twos have tried to do. But the reason Ethereum has not done that is because it sacrifices some of the other values of the blockchain itself, like decentralization and security. And so they've gone with the strategy of creating these layer twos where you can do lots of other transactions just like this. You say many, many, many transactions, then you bundle them up or roll them up and include them into a single transaction that gets you know, reference back on the main blockchain itself. And that is the path forward to having fast, scalable, secure, decentralized blockchains in the future. And so if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you know that I really have a strong bet on Ethereum as being the market leader in the space and that layer twos are one of the best strategies for getting to that point. And if you look at the statistics, you see more and more transactions moving up to Ethereum layer twos. It's been on an upward trend pretty much ever since its inception with some, you know, a little bit of volatility here, which is pretty typical for the crypto space. But overall, the trend's been up even in the midst of this bear market. And if you want to see other examples of real life layer twos, you know, on the marketplace right now, you can see things like, you know, ZK Sync, Arbitrum One, uh, Optimism, and so many more. All right, so with that foundational piece of understanding, let's go back and talk about this, you know, movement that's happened from CeeLo deciding they're not going to be a layer one that's competing against Ethereum anymore. They're going to basically convert to a layer two, which builds on top of Ethereum and throws its dog in this fight rather than, you know, this fight with the likes of, you know, Binance Smart Chain, Ethereum, Avalanche, Solana, and so many more. Well, basically, it's an admission that the best long-term strategy for them is not to try to compete with things like Ethereum, but they have synergy with it and instead try to compete with these other layer twos that are trying to achieve scalability here and that they have a much better shot at doing this. So that's what I think is happening here. And you also look at people do, not what they say, okay? We always see new blockchains come on the scene that say they're gonna be, you know, an Ethereum killer, blah, 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 blah. But I think many people are gonna change course and follow this same strategy and actually convert to Ethereum layer twos over time. And that's where this snowball effect can come into play. All right, so let me outline that snowball effect a little bit further and why this can be such a big deal for Ethereum. Obviously, like more L1s converting to L2s, but let's, let's, let's outline it a little more. 
So let's start off with the multi-chain thesis. So there's a lot of people out there that think that we're just going to have this internet of blockchains where, you know, everybody has this nice equal share of usage, but I really don't think it's going to happen, right? You know, if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you know that. If you haven't, that's okay. I'm totally welcoming new people on the channel, but I want to reiterate this, okay? You see this idea of multi-chain really propagated during bull markets because, you know, you have new blockchains come on the scene that are trying to attract investors. And one of the best strategies is to say, hey, we have this hot new thing that's going to kill it kill Ethereum and lots of new people don't know any better and they sort of fall for it. And behind that justification, they think, oh, you know, the world's a big place and we're going to have this big pie where everybody kind of shares their equal slice. But that's not really how the world tends to work. OK, you can already see the you know distribution of uh, chains here. Like Ethereum still has dominance. And if you add up the Ethereum layer twos, this dominance gets even bigger. And if you look at other things in the world, like search engines, for example, like, yeah, there's a bunch of search engines out there, but a vast majority of searches go through only one. That's Google. It's like over 90 something percent. And I think blockchains will be the same way. And the one that has most momentum, Ethereum, has the strongest shot at being that. I mean, for lots of reasons, like you don't want to be moving your funds around to different chains all the time. It's a pain in the butt to switch your wallet out from one blockchain to another. You want to kind of just stay in one ecosystem and not move around too much. Bridges aren't totally safe. There's lots of reasons why we'll see dominance, I think, around handful if not really just one or two blockchains and now really i've been saying that idea for years but you know in a big bull market where everybody's kind of a got some bag bias and they think that their coin's gonna be the hottest thing in the world nobody wants to hear it but i think people are a little more receptive to these ideas in a bear market like we're in right now and so i want to drill in on this right we're seeing evidence that other people particularly projects are seeing that's in their best interest to move towards layer twos because the L1 thing, sure, it might get hot again during an next crypto expansion, but there's only so many times we can promise an Ethereum killer and totally fail to deliver on those promises. And sure, you know, more retail investors might get fleeced with that idea, but if we see bigger institutional money getting in the space, they're going to have a lot more due diligence and I don't think it'll be that dumb. All right, and so if we actually do see a lot of these layer ones who are trying to compete with Ethereum throw in the towel and say, okay, the best strategy for us is to actually have synergy with Ethereum and then compete with other people who are building on top of Ethereum. Then how can that actually have a massive snowball effect for the Ethereum ecosystem itself and potentially, again, not financial advice, Ethereum, the asset itself? Well, if everybody starts moving to that, um, then that basically means that Ethereum, you know, the ecosystem becomes sort of the default choice for building. And it kind of already is in many ways, but it solidifies that even more. And as you, you know, get better at scalability in these layer two, it's going to pour gasoline on this when you can start doing things like 50, 100,000, maybe even a million transactions per second. And when you start having that kind of activity on the network, you have to understand layer twos pay the gas fees in the layer one blockchains token. So if you have, you know, a CeeLo blockchain, or, uh, you know, Arbitrum or Optimism, when you do a transaction, you pay a gas fee, you're paying it in ETH, not some other random token, because you ultimately have to put that transaction back on the Ethereum main chain. And when that activity happens, that's going to put a lot of demand on ETH of the ETH itself. If you want to use those blockchains, you have to hold ETH to pay the gas fees. And don't forget, now we have deflationary ETH. Whenever new transactions are created on the network, then we burn ETH. And if the ac activity goes up, you can get to the point where you are burning more ETH than is issued by the blockchain itself. We can have greater deflationary pressure on ETH. So if you have a bunch of people who want to come in and hold ETH in order to spend it, and then when they spend it, ETH gets destroyed, that's a situation where the demand for ETH is increasing and the supply is decreasing. So if supply stays the same and the demand increases, that means price goes up. But if you know demand increases, supply goes down, price goes up even way faster. Not to mention combine that with staking yields with people wanting to buy ETH while it's well below its all-time high to get a big rate of return while they're staking so that they can get bonus ETH just for holding it. And then tack on hopefully some regulatory clarity coming up in the future with maybe some ETF approvals. Then all these things could set up for a big ETH explosion in the coming years. All right. And so if you want to get ahead of that next wave that's coming that I really do think is going to get here, I just don't know exactly when, then what's the best way to do that? Well, I'm not making this video to tell you to buy a bunch of Ether. I don't think it's a bad thing. I'm an ETH holder myself. But the best way is to get involved with the technology and double down on your skills while you have time before things get crazy again by learning hard technical skills and becoming a blockchain developer. And so how can you do that? Well, first of all, of course, like the video, make sure you hit the subscribe button. That really helps these videos out so the more can learn about blockchain. But then you can head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. I can show you to break into the blockchain industry in record time increase your salary well past 100k. Trust me, you don't have to be an expert to get started today. I thought people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.